Hi folks, today we're going to take a look at one of Chili's phone calls where he says he's learned his lesson from all of this and well, let's call him out on the bullshit that he has in this video. But before we start today's video, as always, a big thank you to all my current and new channel members and subscribers. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the page, leave a like and a comment because it helps with the algorithm, and if you can, please consider becoming a member. With all that being said, let's enjoy today's video. I went in front of Judge Zimmerman again, and she, she had already decided that I wasn't going to give myself on. And, you know, for Ms. Zimmerman, we, what she doesn't understand is that I really have fundamentally changed my perspective. She may not know that because she only sees what she sees on video, you know. Shenanigans. Na, 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 na. Shenanigans. Na, 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 na. And we're going to have to call shenanigans here. It's not that she's unsympathetic. It's that she's seen your videos where you've pretty much flat out said that this isn't going to change you. You're not going to change your ways. You, you're just going to continue to be the biggest douchebag that you can be. How I have the way I am with my bravado. But obviously after losing in Arizona, losing in Massachusetts, losing in Ohio, and now losing in Nevada, the common denominator there is me. And so when I go to court, I have to change the way I have been, or I'm just going to continue to lose. I'll just continue to lose over and over and over again. So where Ms. Zimmerman was incorrect was that I, I unfortunately, I've had two weeks of just completely being, you know, in a position like this where I have time to think. And so I have changed, and I want to advise anybody else who ever hears me that you should not behave the way that I have done in court in four different states, and I've lost in four it wasn't your behavior in court that got you the 180 day sentence. It was the crimes you committed to get charged with disorderly conduct. Those were the reasons why you were charged. It wasn't the fact that you were being rude to the marshals in the courtroom. It wasn't the fact that you were being disrespectful to the court by putting your feet up on the bench. And it wasn't the fact that you tried to illegally record the, the proceedings. It was the fact of the matter that you committed a crime and she punished you. You can sit there and say that you've changed, but you haven't. As a matter of fact, you are one of the core reasons why Riot Girl Radio blasted all of you First Amendment frauditors for getting her into auditing and ruining her life. So obviously the problem is me, and so I have to change the way I am. Continuing on that idea, as I move into public life, I have to change the rhetoric that I use because there's a half the people support cops and the other half the people don't trust cops at the least. So regardless, though, if I'm going to run for any kind of public office, I have to change my rhetoric. And this is where Ms. Zimmerman was completely wrong. I, I realize now that I have to change. After losing in four states and four different courts, it's not – what's the common denominator? It's me. And so that means that I'm doing it wrong. Uh, dot, 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 yes. And so that's what I want to teach other people. Don't do it like I did. Do it right. Do it. Show the deference and the reverence that you have to show to the court. Even if we don't agree with the system as it is, we still have to live within it. Or, as you saw, I got in front of Ms. Zimmerman, and Ms. Zimmerman formally married a police officer. So, obviously, from her wedding, she's going to have police friends that she's had for the last 20 or 30 years. I have been openly disrespectful to the police. So obviously if I go in front of her court and I show her horse's ass like I did, and she has the power to put me in jail, she's going to. This makes perfect sense to me. It's not personal. I put myself in a bad position. She has all the power and I have none. And she exercised her power. So I made the mistake. It's my mistake. Now, do I feel like it's fair? Of course I don't. <laughs> There's people who've been released from jail here who have committed felonies, who have committed crimes, who have actually stolen or robbed or hurt another person and they have less time than I do. But if you put a camera up the state's ass, they don't like it. They don't want to be filmed and uh, they don't like my rhetoric. They don't like now, Chili, it wasn't your rhetoric or how you talk to the cops. It wasn't the fact that you were filming. It was the fact that you were interfering on a traffic stop. It was the fact that you were being disorderly. It was the fact that you were trespassing in the state of Ohio. It was the simple fact that you caused all these problems for yourself. Don't blame the judge 
because she was formerly married to a cop and you think that she has some bias. If you guys had a hint that she had a bias because she was formerly married to a cop, you could have asked for, you know, a different judge, but you didn't. And the fact of the matter is, yeah, some of those other people in jail might have felonies and might be getting out on bond or have less time. But you've got to take into consideration, do you know when they started their sentence? What conditions or terms they had to their sentencings? Like the way I talk about police and they don't like the way I teach people. And so some of those things do have to change. It's not necessarily going to change that I appreciate an authoritative system where the only solution for any sort of disagreement with government is that you go to jail. I mean, there was, you know, I mean, there was just cages and cages of men going to court today. I, obviously, I can't give any of the layout here. And that, the guards here, they go so on. I'll tell you the initial of a guard. They have initial L. That's all I'm going to say. He came to me and said to me, listen, they have a very strict, rigid set of policies, procedures, and protocols here. So I don't have to fear for my life because there's always going to be more than two or three guards at one time. And that if I just follow the rules as the rules are laid out, then I will be I will be just fine, and I will do four of the six months, and I should be out in July, uh, at the latest August. So the guards have been fair to me. I haven't seen the guards abuse anybody. I haven't seen them be overtly cruel to anybody. It's a very wait a minute. So all that propaganda that you've been spreading around that people are going and being taken to these quote unquote dungeons that are jails and prisons, and they're being tortured by the guards. Is it happening? I'm shocked. It's as if you made up all that stuff out of your own ass. Protocol system here. So I have nothing negative to say about any of the guards here. None of them have treated me. I mean, I don't agree that I should have been thrown in a hole for making a third party call when I did not make a third party call. But why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Oh my God. Stop fucking lying. You know, when in Rome, dance like the Romans, or you're gonna get you're gonna get cooked. So, while I don't agree with the ruling on the, the the meeting that I had, I have two more days left in the hole, and tomorrow I will get no phone call out. None. I'll be locked in a room tomorrow. Shenanigans. Na 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 na. Shenanigans. Na 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 na. And we're calling shenanigans yet again. Chili. How are you making this phone call if you're in the hole? As many people may not be aware, when you are in the hole or solitary confinement or protective custody, you don't get personal phone calls like this. So you're lying about being put in the hole or you're just trying to, well, embellish everything like you normally do. So which is it? Are you lying about being in the hole or are you trying to make yourself look more sad and pathetic than you already did in court? from tonight when I get off this phone until Wednesday when hopefully I get to go back to a regular setting where I can continue to read. So I would like to say thank you to the guards who have been kind to me. There have been, and they do watch and listen to my channel. There's a lot of guards in here who watch my channel. And thank you for not being overtly cruel to me. And some of them have changed my perception on jail guards. They just have not gone out of their way to be cruel at all. And I haven't seen any of that. I've seen people who, you know, if you're not quiet or you don't fall in line, then they, they come down pretty hard on you. And I, there's some things I don't agree with, but I don't think that now is the time to voice those concerns. I think, think that there'll be a time when I come out of here that if I live through this, and I hope that I do, that I'll be able to write a book and I'll be able to, okay. to tell the differences and things that I see. But right now, I'm just going to try to get along. So the next two phases are we are appealing to the Nevada State Supreme Court because of the constitutional issues that there is no 21-foot rule and that the judge had some had some definite anger towards me because of the way that I performed in court. And I've done it in three different states. So obviously, I count effing up. And so I'm going to change the way I do it. And I'm also always going to hire the absolute top-rated best attorney in any place I ever go again. Jilly, you are so wrong on this. It's not the fact that she had a bias towards you. It's not the way you acted in court, because if you it was how you acted in court, she would have found your contempt of court, which she threatened to do. Instead, she punished you for the crimes you committed. 
And it wasn't the fact that your lawyer messed up. It was the fact that you were def essentially arguing a First Amendment trial when you could have been arguing a criminal trial. They did not violate your civil rights. And the fact of the matter is, during that traffic stop, you kept misquoting U.S. versus Rodriguez. Saying he can't end a stop to start another stop with you. U.S. versus Rodriguez is about them extending a stop to search for more reasons to search a vehicle or a person. So that's what I'm going to do, and that was my mistake as well. I, uh, the, the second part of that is that we're going to file a petition for a writ of habeas corpus to be released from jail for ineffective counsel because Michael Mead did not submit a First Amendment brief, did not submit any motions to dismiss the case, then he didn't do any video analysis of the police video, and then he didn't submit my only evidence, my video, into evidence. He didn't submit the only evidence I had into, into evidence. And so uh, then he called me to the stand, and we did no witness preparation. And so that would, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it was ineffective counsel. I well, he's fairly intelligent. Ah, he's full of shit! <laughs> I, I like Michael Mee as a person. I think he's a wonderful human being. I think in this particular case, he was ineffective. So even as you can see, um, um, because I, I know that, this, I mean, the judge told me today in court, she watches my videos. So as you, see, as you can see, even now, if, if, you know, if Ms. Zimmerman is ever to hear this, I've changed the way I even speak because I have to adjust my rhetoric if I'm going to survive in a system that wants to put you in jail if you put yourself in a position to be put in jail. And I've, I've performed this way in four states. And so now at this point when I'm in jail, we have, we have to take a look at my conduct and say, maybe it's you, bro. <laughs> you don't have bad luck. The reason that bad things happen to you is because you're a dumbass. <laughs> maybe it's you. And so I have to change. I have to change ever so slightly here. I have to change the way I behave. And so I will. And so I will. And then as far as the auditing game, now that I have been arrested in jail and I understand just going through the court process with the cop, I have learned how to audit in a way now that will make it so that I can teach an auditing class. Because now I know the red flags that will come up in court. And when I get out of here, I will teach that class. Oh, good. So you thought of a new way to grift people. Uh, your auditing class won't do anything. The auditing style that you have is the auditing style that every frauder has. You're, you're not really different. You're just a bit different with how you look, looking like the love child of Howie Long and Sally Jesse Raphael. I have mapped out constitutional law scholar uh, on paper here in, in solitary confinement. And so I'm going to send that off to people. Um, and I'm going to try to start getting that game put together. I had all the time in the world, so I did it. I just sat there and folded pieces of paper and made squares because that's all I have. All I have is squares of paper. So I'm going to mail those off. And um, I do appreciate all the support. And then um, California, it's, it's California people of the state of. California people of the state of. That person, whoever that is, California people of the state of. Thank you. I'm looking at at least another week or two in here if the appeal to the Nevada State Supreme Court is heard. And then I'm looking at the week or two for the writ of habeas corpus. So I'm looking at, you know, at least one to three more weeks in here if, if both of those get filed in a timely manner. So I'm looking at being in here and through the month of April until the middle or end of April at the very earliest. And at the latest, it's August, but likely middle end of july and that will serve my entire session so that's where i'm at and that's the end of the phone call so we're going to end it here chili your actions are the reason why you're in jail it's not the way you audit it's not the way you acted in court it was the fact that you committed the, cr the crimes and you broke the law and the fact of the matter that the judge is now watching your video phone calls that you're putting out here online is going to be more of a key evidence to help prevent you from getting any appeals done and keep you locked in for your entire sentence. So if you guys like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a thumbs up and comment because it helps me with the algorithm. And if you can, please consider becoming a member. With all that being said, be well, be safe, and I'll see you guys. And a special thank you to all members of the news team. Without your guys' continuous ongoing support, I couldn't keep the channel going. So thank you from the bottom of my heart.